Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Aussie Tech Heads, episode 319 on the 6th of December, 2012. And a welcome, a welcome wherever you may be, wherever you may be. Now, Aussie Tech Heads, have you joined up for a hosting plan yet? Have you got a business, small little business, uh, a medium-sized business? You need hosting. You want to be on the internet? You need hosting, and you have come to the right place. AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash hosting, and you can find some nice Nice, affordable plans, uh, with heaps, of, heaps of room, heaps of speed, heaps of everything. It's, it's great stuff, good stuff. So go and have a look at that. If you're in, for the, in the market for hosting, go and have a look at that. Uh, also, hello, Lounge. Lounge joins us every week, every Thursday night at around about 7.30 Queensland time. Uh, lo- uh, what is it? AussieTechheads.com.au forward slash live. Uh, join us. Join us then and sit in the lounge with the, with the other lounge people that are there every week and uh, cosy up together and talk tech. Why not? Why not? Why not? And um, the video of the show is recorded live. As, as of right now, we're recording live video right now, and it will be on the webpage tomorrow. And you can view it from there or off YouTube, wherever you may want to be viewing it from. You know, put it through your media center or whatever. See, it's on the big screen. Take us, uh, go down to your local cinema and demand to be, the Aussie tech has to be put on the big screen at the cinema. Bobber, Bobber Knob, you make a fortune. All right, where are we tonight? We've got no Will tonight. Will's been working too hard. He's, he's, he's had each stroke. It's been a very hot day up here in Queensland. <laughs> so I don't know. I will get well soon. But uh, we've got the other, the, other, the other rascals here. It's Eric and Shane. Hi, Eric. How are you doing? You can't hear Eric. We'll, we'll talk, to, talk to Shane first. Sorry, I'm oh, here. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm fine. Thank you, Glenn. How's everyone else? Oh, good, good, good. Did you have a nice yeah, little good. week off, did you? I didn't get a note from you. Oh. <laughs> it's in the mail. Yeah, good um, story. I'm all right. It, it, I'm all right. Good stuff. Good Everything's stuff. good. Oh, Everything's yeah. No, good. no. Eric was just away for... Um, he, he just had something on. There's no sickness or anything there. <laughs> it was just, just away. And uh, Shane, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, it's been a quiet week this week. Oh, no, not really. I had the exam last week and then we had the storm and then we had another storm come through. Yes, so, we had a couple of storms and, and bad luck about the cricket. But anyway, it was a good game. Was um, you know, we were all happy day one, day three we weren't, and day four, no, not so happy. But anyway, we got Sri Lanka. Isn't it Sri Lanka coming out next? I think it's Sri Lanka. I don't know. So I'm looking, not that much of a cricket fan. Oh well, we're we're looking forward to the Boxing Day test anyway. Well, I am. And Eric, you were you were you were viewing it on your mobile. Is that is this right? Did you tell me that? What's that? What did I say? Yeah. I was viewing you, it on my mobile. Were you looking at the oh, uh, the um the link? No, the, on my computer, not my not my. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, not, well, I actually not, had a look at the, the I had a look at the mobile uh, cricket. It was only, what, $13 for the whole series. Oh, that's not bad, actually. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. So if, you, if you're out and about like I was, and uh, look, I, I just, I just, what I did was I, the, uh, the highlights uh, was enough for me. But, you know, if I was out for a bit longer and, or, you know, at work or something, oh, well, I think I'd pay for that up and uh, pay for the oh, access and have a, have a look yeah, at it. 13 yeah. bucks for the whole yeah. three series, three test series. And then I think, it's all 30 for the whole summer. I'm not too sure. But it's that Vodafone app, you know, you know the one. All right. So, um, so we're looking, looking good for that, looking good. Now, what else? Oh, the paper, the Aussie Tech Head paper. If you want the little tech paper into your iPad or your Twitters or wherever you want to go, the paper is Aussie, AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash paper. And also um, forward slash radio, the 24-7 radio. We've got, a, we've got another couple of shows. Uh, going on, one's already on. You, remember, you know, Garth. Remember Garth? He's got a, he's got an a audio show on there, and I'm not sure what it's called. I think it's called I think it's called I Blind Tech, and uh, he goes through uh, different technologies and different things that he finds easy to do and and explains what to do, how to do, it and all that sort of stuff. So I Blind Tech, it's on the stream, but um, you know you don't have to listen to the stream, the the radio stream, and and you know just just wait, 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 wait for it to roll around. You can also just go straight to his website if you're into that sort of stuff. It's uh, iBlindTech.com, and you'll be able to just download all these episodes from there or in iTunes. And yes, indeed, indeed, in iTunes. How long has he been doing that? Uh, he's done a few episodes. He's, I think he's done about 11 episodes of audio for kept that. that on, kept that on the quiet, didn't he? Oh, oh no, no. Yeah, yeah, I knew he was doing it. And uh, and so, um, yeah, he's got a web page at iBlindTech.com, and... Um, yeah, it's all it's all pretty it's pretty basic laid out. So if you've got a, a screen reader, it'll it'll just read, obviously. So he set it out. So it's sure. um, yeah, sure. so it's it's good. That's good. Now, so is he just a one man band kind of thing? He's a one man band. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay. 
And uh, other couple of, another show talking to Mark. He's got a he's got a DJ show. He's thinking about throwing up. Uh, so we're going to hopefully do that. So it's all going on on the stream. If you if you've got a radio show or a podcast or something audio wise, you want to you want it want it uh, suitable for our stream. Uh, yeah, you can send me a send me a hoy. Send me an email. Glenn at AussieTechHeads.com.au, and we'll um yeah have a look at it and we we may put it up. So it's uh it's good it's good for you and good for us. So it's free. Well, for you guys, it's free. So uh, have a go, have a go. So if you've got a podcast, let us let us know. And if you want to start a podcast, let us know, and we'll I'll give you some uh, some tips if you like, <laughs> if you if you want them, and I'll let you know. And what's... Take forty percent of the profits. Yeah, yeah, well, unfortunately, podcasting doesn't make any money, but um, I hopefully unless you're Leo, unless you're Leo. Well, he started from from um, I don't know. He started from a good position, well, didn't he? <laughs> one room. No, well, he had he had a lot of funds behind him, but he started in one room and just and just him only. Mm. Yeah, so um, so you know, it's yeah. possible if you're conscientious and you're willing to work hard and you enjoy what you do. That's right. That's exactly right. All right, now uh, we better do some stories, I suppose, because this is what we do on Aussie Tech Eds. We uh, go through the stories of the week and we pick out the ones that we think are interesting to us and hopefully interesting to you. Uh, now, where are we going to start? Um, I don't know. Did you did at the beginning? Let's. Yeah. You know, okay. Well, I'll, I'll throw one in to start with. Did you hear about Apple's biggest share drop in four years? Anyone? No, I did not. Well, Apple shares tumbled more than 6% today, chalking up the biggest single-day loss in four years. So um, as, as fears grow about intensifying competition in the mobile device market. Um, Oversold. It's just people panicking. They're just taking their profits. There's nothing wrong with Apple. Yeah, yeah. Look, as things things go up, things have got to come down. It probably maybe maybe could have been a little bit inflated at the you know at the at the height of its uh, thing, and now it's just leveling out. It's correcting itself. It's called rebalancing your portfolio. Yes, and there, look, there's a couple of issues That's over. It. Yeah, there's a couple of issues over in the US. The um, it says here. I just keep uh, reading this little part here. The stock's massive market value meant Apple was almost single-handedly responsible for when Wednesday's 1.1 percent decline in the Nasdaq. How's that? Mm-hmm. That's how massive they must be. Massive. Apple is still up thirty. Well, what, what are they worth at the moment? Does anyone know? About six hundred million, seven hundred fifty uh, million. Well, share wise, they're at five thirty eight US, and that's down yeah, well, from value. a value from a height of uh, seven oh five. But anyway, like Apple, they're still up thirty three percent this year. Yeah, but, um, that's right. But they're down twenty four percent from the record high, so they're still up thirty three percent. So, oh, geez, smashing targets or what? What do you reckon so they're... if you bought shares at seven hundred and five, you're screwed at the moment. You'd hang on to them. <laughs> you'd sit on. You just hang on. Yeah, you'd put them in a cushion. They're and worth sit on at them. the moment uh, five hundred and six billion. That, that's more than our, that's all. That's more than Ethiopia. But um, probably. Yeah. Now a couple. Yeah. They, they, well, they would. They were worth seven hundred billion. Hmm. Mm, so, that's a lot you know, of money. But, you know, everything goes up and down. As long as it's going up, if, if it's going up and down, but as long as it's an upward trend, then you're okay. And mm. if you just look at their overall figures as well, you, their price-earning ratio is 12 for a tech company that's very low. It should be around 24. So if, if anything, it's probably undervalued at the moment. People have oversold it. Mm. So well, jump on. Yeah, we'll jump on while they're, they're low. That's right. Now, a couple of – look, I've just, got, I've just pulled out three points – why? Just for all you stock heads out there, and I'll tell you, if you have you, I don't know. I've never gone lo- uh, logged into the internet, you know, and, and traded on the net. But I did get a letter through the week from the NAB. And if anyone's out there who hasn't done it and want to dabble, I know the NAB. If you sign up with them, and there's a special code, which I'm sure is pretty easy to get, just go onto their website. I think it's even on the website. They'll give you a thousand dollars worth of free trade. So I think each trade costs you fifteen bucks with the NAB. Between fifteen and thirty. Yeah, and then they're going to give you a thousand dollars of free trades for basically free, free brokerage. Months. Yeah, free that's brokerage. Right. So you could do you could so ten trades of a thousand dollars each. Thousand dollars would only cost you that's three hundred. Just say at thirty bucks. Yep. So you could buy stocks of thirty thousand dollars worth of stocks and not pay any brokerage effectively. Give yeah. or take, give or take yeah. a few dollars. Yeah, I, I was gonna, I was gonna do that, and then I said to myself, "Well, I don't have any money anyway, so what's the point?" Yeah, <laughs> and in so, ninety days, uh, I'm not gonna have any anyway. Buy, 
by yourself. That's right. So uh, I threw, it, threw the letter out. But anyway, look, just for, just for the stock heads, it's uh, the Apple thing. Remember, we're talking about the Apple thing. Unconfirmed reports that at least one major stock clearing house was raising margin requirements on Apple stock trades. Uh, another one that fears about a hike in the capital gains tax in 2013. In America, mind you. This is for this America. This is US, yep. In the event that yep. ongoing Washington fiscal negotiations fail and Nokia had beat Apple to the punch by striking a deal to sell its flagship Lumina through China <laughs> Mobile. <laughs> okay, let's just be real about this. Oh, Look, they love Nokia it. Nokia could have a two-year head start on this. As soon as Apple does a deal with China Mobile, they'll be going, Lumia who? <laughs> a Lumia? This, wasn't that the girl's what? name in Dexter? Huh? Oh, that was Lumen. Yeah. Lumen, that's right, that's right. <laughs> so, you know, okay, they beat Apple to the punch here, yeah, but... So yeah, oh, yeah. Look, it's just, it's all, it's all just, it's just all, uh, just what's in your mind at that time, isn't it? Like people yeah. sell to make money. They think because they sell because they think it's either going to go down further or they want to take their profit. Whatever. They take and a lot of these people have sitting, been sitting on these stocks since it was three hundred. So, I'd be, mm. I'd be doubling down as well and just sit on my cash for a while, especially if you're not sure about, like the guys that they say here, the capital gains tax situation in, um, in in the US in in 2013. Plus, you, if you think that they're going to go over the fiscal cliff, and you need to you need to be cashed up, well, I'd be dumping my successful trades as well. Yeah, yeah, that's keep some right. cash in the bank for a rainy day. You never know, mm. and you know, and it's June thirty clearing. They always do this at the end of each quarter. This yeah. is standard stuff. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. that's all. Yeah. That's good. Good for a gas bag. Now, um, yeah, so that's that's the end of that story. Do you want to do? Do we want to do some more stories? More Apple stories? Uh, let's see. Oh, look, let's just switch. Let's switch. Go to. Do uh, do a few others, then we'll go back to Qantas. All right. Would well, well, you want to do Apple. what we probably should have done? Is is uh, is Shane's going to do a uh, you know what's happened this week in tech on a on a regular basis for us? So I think he's pulled one out of the the box this week. Uh, what have you got, Shane? What what what's happened oh. this week in 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 tech? Well, if we can I say have. That, is um, that right? It's actually one that made mainstream media early on in this week. Um, it was the 20th anniversary for the SMS text message. Oh, has it been 20 years already? Yeah, it has, yeah. On December 3 is the, or was, the 20th anniversary of sending the first SMS uh, text message. Uh, upward, today, upwards of 7 trillion text messages sent every year. That's, a, that's more than 200,000 per second. Um, but, the techni- but the technology at Humble Beginnings, it its origins can be can can be traced back to the Danish pizza rear in 1984. The wow. uh, Matty Matty alphabet. Mackinen. Mackinen. There you go. Uh, a Finnish engineer was uh, in Copenhagen for a mobile telecom conference uh, and began discussing the two, with two colleagues the idea of a messaging system on the GSM digital cellular system. At the at the time, GSM was a Nordic technology becoming a European standard later. Eight years later, SMS had become the standard and Neil Papworth, an engineer working uh, for, for SEMA Group, I don't know if that's the same as Siemens or not, in the UK, uh, was a member of the team developing SMS Service Centre. And, um, and yeah, the rest is history. Now, I'll give you a couple of, couple of other little facts. About uh, about SMSs that I found through the week, or that I found in relation to that story. Now I'm, I'm not. Now the first text. Did you say when the first text was sent was from Orbital, from an Orbital 901? I've never even heard of one of those. So it's probably some brick. Um, now contract engineer Neil Yeah Papworth wrote Merry Christmas to Vodafone colleague Richard Jarvis. It was December 3rd, 1992. Owing to a technology technological restrictions, he had to use a PC to send the message. So is that really now, an SMS? Uh, I don't know. So no, I don't know. Now, the question, he sent it to Vodafone. So how long did it take before they got it? <laughs> I think it's, it's just about to reach there now. So maybe it's December 10 is the real yeah, the real anniversary because it probably took a week for Vodafone to get it. Now, the, the Philippines lead the charge today for the country sending the most text messages with an average of 27 texts a day. That's a, that's a few. I don't, I don't know if I'd send. I'd send a few. Not about twenty-seven. I'd send a few. A single one hundred and sixty character text weighs in at one hundred and forty bytes. So uh, that's that's a pretty high margin. The telcos are paying there for data transmission. 
Isn't it? Yeah. And in, oh, um, yeah. It works out to be something like uh, $1,000 a gigabyte or something. Yeah. At 25 cents per 140 characters. Crazy. 140 bytes, sorry. Crazy. But I think, you know, with uh, the, with the things like new things like, you know, Haytel, that app on the, on the, on the mobile devices, um, you've got this different yeah. contactable, contacting, talking apps these days. It's uh, uh, SMS. Well, not just that. iMessage, too, sends SMS messages from iPhone to iPhone over the data. Yes. So you're actually paying, nothing. you know, a lot less than 25 cents. You're paying mm. next to nothing. Because yeah. you know, if it, if you was costed, because that's part of your, your your plan, obviously, your one gig or two and a half gig, whatever you've got. But if you paid for that, it'd probably cost one cent instead of twenty five. Yes, yeah, that's right, yeah. that's right. Mm. And and plus, if you know, you might be at home and sending it, and it's going through Wi Fi over uh, the Wi Fi, and it's yeah. part of your cap. Yeah, I'm not right. going to send five hundred gigs in SMSs. I can tell you. No, and <laughs> so, so talking of uh, these little communication apps. Now, I can't say anything uh, t- this week, but just go and have a look at uh, Zello. The Zello app, uh, it's on the iPhone, it's on the Android, and um, download it, get used to it, because uh, we're going to do something with it. And hopefully when Will comes back next week, that's when we're going to start doing something. Um, I was going to do it tonight, but Will knows more about it than I do, so uh, there you go. Oh, I think someone's coming through on Zello now, actually. But, um, Probably Will. No, it's not Will, but anyway, that's how it goes. So, um, Doesn't it suck your battery, Glenn? No. Because it's always on? No, it's just an app. Just yeah, an app. but it's always in the background and someone buzzes you. It's always searching for, because it's push. Yeah. Oh, no, not, I don't care. <laughs> Basically. I, I, look, my phone lasts me probably a day, like 12 hours, I suppose. I'd have to recharge my, mm. probably every 12 hours. Uh, I've ordered another couple of leads, you know, a couple, another couple of these iPhone 5 Leads. Have you sorted out your car charging situation yet? I have. I bought a USB charger from the Apple Store, and yep. uh, so I, I've, at the moment I've got the USB charger, and I've got to drag the lead from office to car. Uh, but that will change when I get more of these leads. So I've got a couple, two right. more coming from Honkers. So hopefully there's. What about uh, going to be good? What about your hands-free setup for talking on the phone? Yes, I did get a a, a sucker for the windscreen. And I, I got yeah. a, you should have a look at this little baby because I did get one and it sat inside, it sat inside the air conditioning vents. You know, it was pr- probably pretty cool. Yeah. Right? You yeah. know, pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, but what happens is because I've got, I put a cover, I put a, you know, a really tiny skinny cover on my phone. I don't know if you can see mm. that there, but just made it that, that too big. It wouldn't fit inside the mold. Oh, because, so you've got to take your cover off. Yeah, because it was a yeah, perfect. I've got a, I've got a skinny cover like that too. Yeah, because it's a perfect. The, these these holders, they're yeah. they're a perfect fit. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look like you've got a, an actual cover when you've got. Yeah, that's right. But they're still wider, yeah. makes the phone wider, and obviously it's got to be uh, it's got to be a perfect fit because yeah. otherwise your phone's going to jiggle around. You don't want it jiggling around every time you go over a hump or a bump. Uh, but what I got was this thing. Have a look at this. Now I got this from Honkers on eBay. I'm sure you'll find them. Now, so it's a normal one, it's like that. Is it a Bluetooth or is it just a, a holder? No, it's just a holder. But look, right. It's sort of like a universal because it's got a clip on it. It's like an yeah. alligator clip, and you open it like that, and you put your phone in. Now let me get me out of the hand. Oh, okay. So it'll fit anything. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, oh, hang on. This is this is harder than what it looks doing it like this. So yeah. So in there, and you clip that on. Yeah, tight as a button. Tight as a button. Cool. You need a Bluetooth setup. Very hard to talk on the car if you're. Uh, yeah, I've got the Bluetooth just... going through my radio. I bought, bought a Bluetooth oh, okay. radio. So uh, what happens is I can talk and it comes out the car speakers and stuff. Where's the mic? Uh, it's in the radio. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah. And it obviously just cuts the radio out when you when it when the phone rings. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, right. And, yeah, oh, that's and all you. That's all you need. You're 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 good to go. Yes, and then I also the podcast. You know, jump in the car, uh, bang the pairs. Pod me where I was up to when the podcast starts playing. You know, easy phone rings, podcast oh, stops. But, hello, yep, yep, good. Yep, yep. <laughs> See you later. I'm listening to a podcast. Get off. That's right. Oh, That's you, want right. Me, you want some business? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll delay the podcast. <laughs> That's right. Now look, I just finished. Shane, did you uh, have any more to do with uh, the text happy birthdays, or are we you finished with them? No, no, it's covered it. Yeah, no, no, I'm good. All right. I just got two more little points that I'm, I found, and we'll move on to something else. In 2010, over 6 million texts were sent annually across the world. 6 trillion. 
And in China, users get more than 12 spam texts a week. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> ching, ching. Chingly chings. <laughs> okay. Now, um, all right, Eric, you can choose the next story if you want. All right. I'll choose the next one. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first official press shot of Ashton Kutcher, 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 whatever you want to call him, as Steve Jobs released, to pre- and it's to premiere in the Sundance Film Festival, and that will be, when is the Sundance Film Festival? Does not does it say? So they're not releasing uh, this in the movies or anything? Well, no, they'll release it at the festival, then it'll probably be released after that widely, but they're going to premiere it at the film festival, right. I would suggest. But I'll tell you what, he has an uncanny resemblance to Steve Jobs at the same age. Have you seen the picture? Can you put the picture up if you can? Yeah, young version. Oh, That's unbelievable. As, yeah, it's pretty good. Bloody isn't likeness, isn't it? I like the little apple too. It's very in good. The background. It's got all the apple garb in the background there. Is yeah, there all the apple garb. That's on set, obviously. Yeah. yeah, that's an apple there in the background. Yeah, but it's an apple two. Or, it's not a two e. It's a two, isn't it? Looks just a two. It might be a Lisa or something. No, it's not a Lisa. That's a so, two. So, um, there's a announced that it's called Jobs with a little J. Um, would premiere at this year's festival. It doesn't say when the festival is. I can't. I don't know when that is. The fo- the photo shows the two and a half men star. So two and a half men lead in a cubicle, outfitted in a button-down shirt, jeans, and a goatee, and no shoes. If you've noticed, just got socks on. Uh, <laughs> January he leads the against 17th. the rubber, but January the what? January the seventeenth. Oh, it is dues in Utah. Okay, I was thinking of something else. Is said, If anyone wants to Google for me when the Khan Fist Film Festival, not Cairns, Khan, C A double N E S. That I was thinking. I was thinking of that. So January, so that's good. It'll be released in the new year very soon. So that's mm. good. Excellent. Mm. So, so yeah. I will watch that. That'll be interesting. And um, I'm sure he, he's done a good job, we'll, but we'll find out soon enough. We'll find, we will find out soon enough, but it, does, it's, it is uncanny. It does look like they've done a, they've done a good job there, done a really good job. Now, yep. There's a, um, apparently another movie coming out as well that Sony's behind. Um, yeah, that's, the, that's the, the one that's based on the book. Uh, okay. the, yeah, that's the, right, the, yeah. The official, um, the official biography. Yeah, I don't know who's starring in that though. Though they, do they, um, have they picked an actor for that yet? I haven't seen. No, and I've also heard that they're doing, um, like a theatre thing, where oh, Jobs the Musical. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> something, something. Oh, I'll tell you what, everyone's similar. just cashing in now, aren't they? <laughs> it's like Warn, and... Warnie the Musical. Remember that? Oh yeah, Warnie. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, God, but, what's going now on this... with him? This theatre thing, I think it's only one guy, and it's like a monologue kind of thing, where he actually um, reenacts different parts of the book. I was oh talking right, about okay. It on um, on Twit or something last week. Oh All okay. Right. All right, sorry, I was just I was just having a drink there. I was going a bit uh, a bit dry. Now uh, of water, I mean. Now um, Andrew uh, Andrew <laughs> Android Five. Can you believe it? Android 5. Uh, key Lime Pie, expected May 2013. Now, I've got a, got a graphic here as always. Uh, Google has announced the date for its annual I.O. developer event where the next iteration of Android reportedly it will be called Android 5 Key Lime Pie. What is a Key Lime Pie? It's obviously some sort of uh, dessert. Uh, the event will be held on May 15th. Now, this comic strip pitch uh, was posted. Comic strip has been posted by a Google employee earlier in the week. Uh, blah blah blah. The latest Android character in the cartoon is pictured with a piece with a slice of key lime pie. There, no details of the features of the new update have been released. But what has anyone here one ever had key lime pie? I've never had. Well, look, we probably have all had it, maybe, but it's probably called something else. So yeah. maybe that's why I don't know what it is. Mm. So anyway, we can all Google that if we're desperate to find out. So um, the only time I've drunk something with lime in it is, you know, like an alcoholic type drink. <laughs> Lemon, lime, and bitters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Corona and Corona and lime. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, um, Qantas. Oh, I see they've uh, they've axed their Wi-Fi only after only nine months. What is Cheap going pricks. on? Oh, I know what's going on. Uh, the service offered. On six carriers, six A380s flying between LA and London, had an update. They didn't really roll it out, did they? No. Nah, well, yeah. But they're going to cancel it now because you've got no interest. Well, you've got no interest because you never promoted it. Yeah. And when you did, you probably charged it 50 bucks every five minutes. And then you only put it on three planes, knobheads. 
So what happens? Yeah, well, I, that's what I reckon. I reckon this might have something to do with it. The in-flight packages between twelve dollars ninety and thirty nine ninety for downloads of up to thirty five meg. <laughs> so what? Thirty five megabytes for forty dollars? Yeah. So that's why it <laughs> failed. <laughs> the knob, yeah, and they knobs. This is what I don't understand. They scratch their heads. I'll just and wonder why people are deserting them. They're losing money. For example, right? I was at my brother in law's place last weekend. And um, they're planning a trip to Europe next year, and they're getting airfares and whatnot. They've booked everything. They've booked on Cathay Pacific from to go to Sydney to Hong Kong and Hong Kong to London, and then back from Rome to Hong Kong back to Sydney. Right? Mm. Qantas wanted to charge them twelve thousand dollars a person. It's five of them. Yeah. Right? Jeez. They got the whole lot for twelve on economy. That's sixty thousand. Economy. Twelve. Yeah, nearly sixty thousand dollars. Qantas, and they and they. These idiots in their boardrooms are going, I wonder why people are flying this. <laughs> and they got on Cathay Pacific, where I have, I have flown many, many times. The service is fantastic. The food craps all over Qantas food. Yeah. And you, you, know, you know what he paid? $7,000, $7,500. For each? Oh, no, for the lot. No. For the lot. For the lot. For the lot. So you say 53000 Yeah. <laughs> That's not chicken feed, eh? No. That's and rubbish. It, the, That's rubbish. And they wonder why. They wonder why people are deserting them. And you go on, um, uh, what's your, Virgin, Virgin America, they've got internet on their flights, and it's a flat fee. If you're flying more than, if you say you're going um, from naught to, I think, one hour to three hours, it's 20 bucks, right? Yeah. No download limits. You know, if you're flying more than six hours, I think it's $50. And if you're flying, you know, 24 hours stint, maybe from LA to, you know, to Europe or whatever, you might pay $70, unlimited, right? That's fine. I can do that. But what's Qantas charge? $40 for 30 That's, That's rubbish. unbelievable. That's rubbish. Does anyone know the... And they that... wonder why it's failing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Shane. What, what... I was going to say, does anyone know how the technology works? I mean, obviously, it's Wi-Fi within the plane, but how does the plane connect to the... Actual... Satellite. Satellite. Oh, okay. Yeah. They've got this satellite. They've just constantly... Um, apparently, I'm not sure this is correct or not, um, apparently, just they keep... They, 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 they're hooked into a few, depending on what route they're taking, there'll be a few satellites always over that route. Um, and, and so they'll always, they'll just jump from satellite to satellite to satellite, like a cell, like a cell phone cell. So if you're driving and you go from one cell to another, I suppose when you're flying, it, it'd be a similar thing. Oh, okay. So there's no dead spots or anything like that? Well, look, there probably would be when you're skipping between cells. They're probably all satellites. There might be, it might go slow for you know 30 seconds to 40 seconds and suddenly oh it quickens up again but that's to be expected because the technology is relatively new um in regards to that so but still they're not they're not even trying how are you supposed to get take up when you're charging it's like telstra saying yeah we'll give you a phone but it's going to cost you a thousand bucks a day yeah. of course no one's going to take it yeah, it's right it's rubbish you know? it's rubbish it's rubbish that's crazy just, but, i haven't flown Qantas. i haven't flown Qantas in 10 years and i won't yeah, okay. and I fly. I fly a fair bit. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's um, interesting. Now, the Microsoft reveals Surface Pro pricing. Now, remember, we had the Surface. <laughs> we've had the <laughs> we've had the the Dicky Surface. Um, well, the Surface not non Pro already released just recently. Apparently, not selling too good. Uh, didn't they buy or didn't they have made about what? 30 million or something they had some large number made which i thought they would um you know crap it and how many they reckon they've sold i'm not sure how many that they reckon they've sold i think they've mm. yeah i don't know i don't know but uh but anyway uh the pro now what the difference is with the pro the pro will be running the windows 8 you know not not the the, yeah, the, the proper so you will run all your existing applications that's right effectively so it's going to launch yeah. in land in january 64 gig versions will cost $862 and 128 gig version will cost $968. Here's so a question for you. They're up there. Here's a, yeah, they're up there. Well, that's I can do I can I can sort of deal with that in a, in a roundabout way sort of. Pretty much a lap, know, they're pretty much a laptop. You know, laptop, right? That's right. So that's what gets me, right? It's got a touch screen. So that's the that's the unique selling point. It's a touch screen and you can dis, you can disassemble the keyboard from it and it's and it's a touch screen and it's like a tablet. Fine, I get that. So the first point is um, it's probably as costly as a normal laptop, except a normal laptop doesn't have a touch screen generally. 
Yep. Um, but and it runs all your normal native Windows applications. That's correct, right? Yes. But if you were to install Office on that with Outlook and everything else, how much room would that take on a 128 gig <laughs> drive? You wouldn't have anything left. That's an issue, isn't it, really? Well, the OS, you'd probably think, you'd, yeah, well, because the OS needs room to move as well. You know, it needs well, I reckon it's probably a dumbed down OS, I would say, a light, you know, like Windows Lite. But, but you know, with, with uh, you know, pro, uh, what's you call it, what do you call it, DL, DLLs and all other bits and pieces mm. there that allows you to run native apps. And that's fine. But, you know, I don't know how much a Windows install takes. What is it, five gigs, Glenn? For yeah, Windows well, install? Oh, look, I think it's going to be, be more than that. That's what's on the DVD, but doesn't it? I think it expands out it a little expands. bit more. Well, okay, let's say it's 10, but if you on the Windows Lite, Windows Pro, let's call it 5. So there's you're down to 123. Office is going to take another 5. I think it's more than 10. Oh, yeah? I, yeah, I... I I, I thought it would have been up there, like uh, that, the, to, for it to run comfortably, you know, like. Um, cause it, it, and what's the RAM on these things? That's the other question, because Office is a fairly big, blustery program, and it needs a lot of RAM to run. What's the RAM on these, on these tablets? Well, I've, I just, Not, I don't know. I, I just two gigs. I, no, but I thought it was just all just all RAM, wasn't it? Like like the iPad, sixty four gig. It's just all all. It's all RAM. It's all. It's, it's, it's just, just. Yeah. It's all. Um. It's, it's all. Um. What you call it? SD or what? What you call yeah, flash drive? Flash. Yeah. Flash storage. It's all. It's all in. All in. You know. Um. But I don't know. Oh, look, geez. I haven't. I haven't looked at the specs that closely. I'm well, I'd be interested prices. to have a look at that because look, I don't mind. I don't mind it. I've seen the ads and they they're doing some you know kooky things with it and all that sort of stuff. I think, oh, that looks pretty cool. It might be useful, but I'm just worried about the glo- the bloat. Mm. The, the the bloat of, of native soft, um, app, uh, Microsoft applications. They're not selling it. The other thing you will probably have running a Core i5 and all that kind of stuff. It's going to have like fans and the whole bit. Well, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know what it's. I don't know what's in it. You'd have to have something to cool it down if it's got running all these bloated Windows applications. Because that's they're selling it with the idea that it can run native apps. Mm. I just I've just got a funny. It's going to be. This is going to be a little bit of a disaster. Unfortunately, because I think it's a good idea. Well, if it was if it was a true replacement for the laptop, it'd be a great idea. Uh, but as you say, oh, yeah, look, I, I haven't gone into it really that much, um, unfortunately, uh, to to be able to tell you like yeah what the what the sizes of everything is like if mm. it's going to take all the all the programs that you can throw at it. I, I, yeah, I, I know that the physical specs. Um, that's. Pre- Pretty much as far as I've been, it's uh what it's about four millimeters thicker than the than the ARM version. The mm, Intel yeah. is nine hundred and three grams, and the ARM version is six hundred and seventy six grams. So that's probably your little cooling fan. It's a kilo, so it's nearly a kilo. Yeah, I think that's too heavy. It is uh, too heavy for something like that. Like, Was that without the keyboard? Because what's yeah. a what's a MacBook Air? That's about a kilo, and that's got a keyboard. Yeah, right. Right. Mm. I was listening. And that's the you know the interesting thing is why can't they make it? For example, if you could just picture this, a MacBook Air. My wife's got one, and they are as thin as they say. They do fit in an envelope. Yeah. They're bloody brilliant. They're light as any. You could throw them around. You could use them as a frisbee, feeding them. But and they come in all sizes as far as storage go. And they've got RAM. You know, she's got four gigs of RAM in hers. Plus, mm. it's she's got I think two hundred fifty six gig um, flash drive on in it as well. And it's lightning fast. Now, could you imagine if that, when you close the lid, was also a tablet and yeah. that thin? Yeah. yeah. Apple would just kill this market. They're probably sitting back going, all right, then, you do that. We'll come by and we'll just do it better. This is what we're going to do now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We're, we're gonna... and, they'll be, and, and then, you know, you know what will be playing in the background? <laughs> That's yeah. it, Microsoft. Give it up. <laughs> Unfortunately, because it's a good idea. Yeah, look, 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 give it, look, this is, this is a version one release of a piece of hardware. Yeah, so, that's so, right. You know, and Apple's that's already right. up to four, version four. That's right. Well, the, the first MacBook Air was a piece of garbage. It was underpowered, it overheated, it was just, it was light, but, you know, blah. Yeah. So, you're right, it's version one, let's, and let's hope they learn from it, because mm. if they don't, uh, Apple will kill them. And <laughs> Google, too, they'll come out with their own version. 
Yeah, oh, everyone's going to come out with a, all this bloody, all this click and click things going on. Click the That's keyboards right. in That's and right. click that. I think I think what the world's looking for now is uh, look desktops. Yes, we've had, we've revolutionised the desktop. Uh, you know, everyone's gone. They went to to netbooks and whatever, and now it's gone to the pad, the tablets, the pads. And I yeah, reckon they that, went to the they revolutionised the phone. Yep, yeah. But I think what the next stage is now for me, if I, I'm looking at something, I want a a tablet laptop something as powerful as a laptop but i want it touch yes. screen and i know you can get well, the things out there that you know you turn the screen back onto itself and blah 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 yeah but, but they're clunky that's right i've seen those that's right. yeah, they're clunky toshiba hp you feel like you're carrying encyclopedia britannica under your arm yeah i like the idea of the cover of microsoft the, the surface of the cover being mm. the keyboard i do i like that i think it, it's yeah cool. look i've got no issue with any of that i just think that the guts of it is what they've got to improve on Mm, yeah, but that'll that, that'll that'll work. You know, I would love a high-powered laptop slash tablet that is as thin as a MacBook Air, and it has the same computing power as, as that. But when I shut the lid, I can it's a tablet. You yeah. know, it can be an 11 inch, it can be a 13 inch. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we can go on all night with our our wishes, but um, but anyway. Are uh, you listening? Are you listening, Steve? They always listen. Do you remember how many things have we spoke about on this show, including going back to when Mark was on the show, and then in a couple of months, oh, there, there, they just magically appear. There they are. Yep. And we, yep. Don't, we don't is. get no money for it, but no you know, cred. That, that's that's no life. cred. That's no. Life. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cheaters. We suck it up. Now, <laughs> Shane, A Triple C. What what they're launching? The things are going on over there. They're getting into the space race. Yeah, I think they're um, <laughs> doing it obviously to protect the public and all that kind of stuff. The A Triple C launches a mobile app. Um, to store photos of shopping receipts. Consumers will be able to store photos of their shopping receipts on their smartphones and tablets to present to the retailers if they want to return the goods. The facility is included in a mobile shopper application released today by the Australian Consumer and whatever they're called. Um, The ACCC Deputy Chair Dahlia Ricard Delia Rica Del- uh, Del- says the free ACCC shopper app provides answers to frequently asked consumer questions oh, on good. refunds, good. returns, warranties, and laybys. The feature like most uh, that the feature I like most about the app is that you can quickly photograph copies of your receipts. So you, if you need proof of purchase uh, and you want to return them later on, you can. You've got them on the on the phone. And she told the ABC Television. You can also uh, set it for reminders about when gift cards are going to expire and you need to make lay-by payments. Yeah, that's good. But, but you know, just going back to taking photos of your receipts, like that is, that's a, that's, that's a fantastic idea. But you can already do it. I've got this little app on my phone. Now, I've been doing this for a little while. My little app is called, uh, it's called Cam Scanner. So this is iOS, but Cam Scanner. And I can I just take photos of A4 pages. You know, I had a document I filled out the other day, and it was a double-sided document. And I wanted to, I thought, oh, I should photocopy this, you know, before I send it off, just so I just to keep a copy. But I, I would have been here for half an hour because my printer it scanned, but it only scan one, you know, one side of the page at a time. So I'd have to scan, say, all the odds, then scan all the evens, plus. Maybe the, I don't know if I, if I haven't looked into how the workings of the printer far enough or not, but they all, all each scan comes in as a different file. Headache. It's a headache. So, uh, but yeah, so I got onto this uh, cam scanner and take photos. And you you say oh, I'm going to take a photo of a book. You know, book. Say so click book, and you go snap page one, snap page two, snap page three, snap page four, snap page five, and it comes in on your phone. You can zoom in, zoom out. It's uh, good. I think it even will do OCR. It does uh, business cards. Whatever you want to scan and snap, it's a good little app. Good little app. But anyway, A Triple C. The thing I like about that one is the the, the FAQs, you know, on warranties and the, and so forth. So I like that. Mm, good, 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 good. How how do you go with it being a picture of a receipt? I mean, does anyone sort of arc up and say, "Oh, you, know, you could have showed, photoshopped that. That's not the original one." Oh, uh, look. I think if they didn't believe you, I'm sure that they could go back through their 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 records. But then, you know, obviously, if it was a purchase and they, they really thought that, that that wasn't fair income and then that they went back through their records and they couldn't find it, then, they're, you know, that you'd have to say, well, we don't think that's true. But, you know, like if push come to shove, you've got the receipt, you've got the date, you've got the time, you've got everything on there. So it should be relatively 
and I mean like relatively easy if you wanted to if they wanted to to go back and find it. So I can't see too much of an issue with that. But one of the problems with speaking about warranties and stuff is we had this TV and the remote control went on. You know, just just went one night we turned it off and the next night no- next morning or next night we came in, turned it back on, nothing. The control was dead. So we rang up uh, we rang up the manufacturer and everything. They they were pretty good. They said, oh yeah, just send us the purchase receipt and the photo of the remote and we'll send one out. So. We did all that, and then they, they write an email back and say, well, we want the serial number of the TV. And, I mean, like we're talking, I don't know, the remote must cost them 20 bucks, but now we're, we're, we're talking, so we're saying to them, well, okay, the serial number you've placed on the back of the TV. The TV mm. is on the wall. So you want me to pay someone to come out, take the TV off the wall, get the, res- the serial number to give it to you? Mm. Like, are they just trying to make this as hard as they can so they don't want to give us a twenty dollar? Yeah, but I'll, I'll take that TV off the wall if need be. I will take it down. I will get that serial number. But but I mean, and I'll show you. <laughs> that's right. But I mean, that, that's just that's just off. You know, I'm off on a tangent. I'm sorry, but that's just how that's just crazy, isn't it? Like they want the serial number. It's on the wall. It's fixed to the wall. You know, I can get it off, but I'm not gonna tell them that. All right. Yeah, but it's a pain. It's a hassle. It's a pain. Yeah, exactly. It's just a hassle. And like, and maybe, and then I thought, well, maybe I, there should be an app, and there probably is, where you just punch in or photograph your serial numbers, you know, before you put things on the wall and stuff like that. And and also it'd be good for insurance. Well, any any appliance you buy. Yeah. You know, you can take a photo, and it uh, and you and it says well, what is it? You put toaster brand, whatever, you know, mm. Russell Hobbs, whatever, and then it categorizes it for you on a database on your computer. Yeah. With Good. a serial number, when and when you bought it for warranty purposes. That's right, and also you need. insurance purposes. Someone invent that and give me credit, please. Don't worry, uh, Eric. Will be Garth will be reviewing It'll that. It'll be out app. next week. I know. I know. <laughs> Garth this time will, next week it would be out. Garth will review that up in three weeks' time. Now, uh, yes. and speaking of Garth, he's uh, he will be back soon. We just got to uh, get some more reviews out of him, but he will be back. Uh, maybe before the end of the year. Maybe that that's a maybe. So, uh, but let, let's just um, you know hang out for that. Uh, you can see his past reviews up on the webpage, aussietechheads.com.au. And you can also see his review on Zello. Remember I mentioned that at the start of the show? Yeah. So, so go and have a look at Zello. Z-E-L-L-O. It's uh, one of his reviews up there. Now, Google Play now lets businesses host their own app stores. What is what? this? <laughs> what? Well, what? 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 So Google announced Tuesday that companies with their own in-house Android applications can now distribute them internally via the new private channel feature of the Play Store. So, fair enough. You know, co- uh, businesses might want to make up their own their own app. You know, um, t- t- sales, target achievements, and all this sort of stuff. Yep. Uh, so now they just pump them out through a private channel. Uh, whether you've now this is who's who's saying this? Google Play product manager uh, doesn't say his name, but anyway, this is what he says. Whether you've built a custom expense reporting app for employees or a conference room finder, the Google Play private channel is designed to make your organization's internal apps quick and easy for employees to find. Once your company has loaded these internal apps using the Google Play developer console, users just need to log in with their company email address to browse the private channel and download the apps. So good, 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 good. Now, apparently there was a side story there. I read a story about Cricket Australia, iOS uh, point of view. It was an iOS app, I think it was. And they've got their own internal... Uh, health sort of check, you know, where the, the, the athletes can punch in what they're eating and what, what oh, medications don't, don't. and bloody well being index. That's a load of crap. That's why they lost the bloody third test. Well, have you heard about yeah, that? That's another story. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> it's another story. You, might, you know, it sounds like you know more about that than, than what I do. Yeah, I do. Don't worry. Uh, Skype confirms video messaging feature. So, yes. So, that, um, video messages. Check service was reported in September as a feature that would allow Skype users to send short pre-recorded messages to other Skype users. Uh, has, nothing's been discussed about that or nothing's been publicly sort of announced, but the terms and conditions had changed on Wednesday, uh, being updated to, yeah, Skype to include unlimited video messaging will be offered to users of the Skype premium service, the service that costs $9 a month. Users who aren't on the premium membership will soon be able to send video messages, but the number is limited. Uh, there's no mention of what the limitation is. The messages sent and received by non-premium users will expire after 90 days unless they come from a premium number. 
Anyway, so that's all happening over there at Skype World. And uh, don't we all mm. love, don't we all love Skype, Skype? Skype World. <laughs> Skype World. Good on you, Microsoft. Oh, well good done. old good old Skype World. Now, Eric, did you have any other... What else have you got in your little box of tricks I here? may have. I may have. What about a China story? <clears throat> all right. Next. China Mobile President confirms ongoing iPhone talks with Apple. Deal yet to be reached. Yu Li, president of the world's largest world world's largest carrier, China Mobile, confirmed on Wednesday that the telecom has been in talks with Apple since 2009 to bring the iPhone to its network since. Since, however, the two of who wrote this, Mikey Campbell, your grammar's shocking. However, the two are far from striking a deal. Um, I I read somewhere that the deal that it's the the Chinese are very um, particular about privacy. Um, yep. They like to know about your business, but yes. they don't want you to know about, <laughs> about theirs. theirs. Yes. Um, um, so I think that's it's somewhere about that, and I think also they've been quibbling about the um, what they're going to sell it for. You know, the subsidy issue. Like if they sign up, so I want a plan at fifty bucks a month. How much Apple's going to get that sort of thing? So, but I'm sure they'll sort that out eventually. Oh, yes. um, well, Nokia's got the knock uh, from the previous story. We get knock. Loom out. That's why because they're giving it away. That's why. Although yeah. China Mobile is not an official Apple partner carrier, it was reported in March that some 15 million of the providers over get this 700 million subscribers, hmm. 700 million, 15 million million of iPhone users. Obviously, you know, grey market, they bring it in from Hong Kong or, mm. or Macau or Taiwan or Singapore, and uh, and they sign up to China Mobile. So they already know how to handle the iPhone. They've got the infrastructure for it. Well, they've got Apple so stores just trying to set there. The... Haven't they? They've got Apple Yeah, they do. So they obviously... Yeah. But, but what, they're not selling iPhones? Is this, this is what you're no, they sell iPhones, but they don't. you can't buy them through China Mobile. So you've got to buy them outright and then go put it on a plan. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. You know? Right. So, uh, but uh, I tell you what, and Apple are really hanging out for this because could you imagine if they sign them up? If you just get ten percent, that's mm. an extra seventy million iPhones in one country. Yeah, jeez, that's seven hundred million subscribers. <laughs> Do the lot. maths on that at fifty dollars a month. Well, now, I don't think I've got enough noughts in my calculator. <laughs> no, not even on um, scientific mode. Now, uh, no. <laughs> now, is this your story here too? The bill shock. Was, yes. Oh, look, it's not strictly an Apple story, but it's sort of just before, half related just, because it's about about bills, you know, yeah, smartphones. Yeah, just before you stuff. just go into that, because um, I think you, you and Shane might have both had it, but can you guys just talk about that? I just want to just duck out and let the, the dog out. She's having a bit of a cry. Okay, so, go, go, Shane, so, go for it. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, it's a, it's a story about um, – and, and this is one of those stories – that you know you see on today tonight and the current affair and any of those where it's kind of just cyclical every kind of three six months they kind of bring it up um, but anyway the goes on to sort of say that the smartphone users well uh, worried Big Brother is watching and then tracing every move through their device new research by consumer ratings agency CanStar Blue uh, found 29 percent of the smartphone owners were concerned uh, their whereabouts could have been traced through their phone. Um, the data also showed nearly one in five smartphone users, 19%, were shocked by the size of their phone bills. Generation Y being the um, the most experienced, uh, the most to have, the most likely to have experienced bill shock, 27%. Camstar Blue spokeswoman Amy Parlington, Partington, uh, said Australians were also untruthful when uh, when signing up for the smartphones they're basically saying that they're more financial than what they really are and then um, obviously when they start using their phones their bills come in higher than what they've expected um, so it wouldn't it wouldn't, I mean, there are. it wouldn't have anything to do with uh, say the likes of Optus going oh unlimited plan and things like that yeah. <laughs> you know oh, look, I'd say it might have something to do with that now generation Y what age group are we looking at there Anyone, um, oh, yeah. I think give, that'd be sub twenty five, or is that even? Yeah, too well, old? get off your asses, people. <laughs> <laughs> there was an article in the City Morning Herald today. I think it was it was a uh, Gen Y bother. They, apparently, they don't bother doing anything. 
But anyway. Yeah, dude, pass me the doobie. I want to smoke a doobie. <laughs> so, but you know, if you are a Gen Y out there, you, 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 you're getting a bit of a reputation. But you know what? I would take it on board and say, this is great. If you're Gen Y and you'd be saying, this is great because while those other guys are out there doobie and along, you get out there, get off your butt and go and do something and you make a fortune. So That's right. Get out. My father always said, the more idiots are, there are in the world, the better it is for you because then you'll, cause you'll walk over the top of them. So That's you right. Gen Ys, it doesn't have to be always that way. That's right. And I thought I said, um, what was I say? Uh, I said something to the little bloke the other day. Something happened. And I said, you know what? You don't want to, um, I think it must have been with a friend or something. I said, no, you, you can't go and play with him. You don't want to be taking him to, to McDonald's. I said, because he's an idiot. You don't want to be taking him to McDonald's. You can, you, you, That's right. Wait till you go to McDonald's, you can always find an idiot there. So you don't have to take That's him. That's right. You don't, there's no need That's to That's right. And not only that, him. if you take him, well, if he takes him there, then he might, the, his friend might get inspired and go, this is where I want to work, Daddy. <laughs> there you go, Gen Y. Woo. <laughs> now, uh, um, did we finish with that one? Is that one finished, Shane? No, oh, yeah, I've finished my bit. I mean, oh, Harry can run with the rest of it if you want. <laughs> no, no, you that's good. You go for your life. Go for your life. That's it. All right, that's now. good. But you know, look, 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 I, look. Just before we go, I don't understand though. It's look. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but you you see these things and it says on there, there quite clearly. And I've been I've had a mobile phone since what 1994, Nokia, hmm. right? And when you sign up, it says there quite clearly. Even in back then, twenty nearly twenty years ago when they weren't as transparent with their terms and conditions, it was pretty hard to get stung. Because it was they'd say there, well, this is how much you're gonna get and yep. this is the month this is your monthly bill. If you go over, this is how you pay extra, you pay this much extra. And your bill goes from month to month. Yeah. It's not that hard to work out. Now it's easier these days because number one, they're more transparent with their because they have to be. They're going, look, you've got to tell full disclosure, blah, blah, blah. And it says on there. You've got a cap of eight hundred dollars for calls yeah. and text, yeah. and one and a half gigabytes. Here's the and the guy who tells you, and we've got a free app. This is how you check it. How yeah, how can anyone get a twenty eight thousand dollar bill? Yeah. for well, example. Well, you yeah, know well, what a complete nuff. <laughs> I've never had. You know, really, a bill shop. If, if the guys yeah. are upset and they're and they, and they go bankrupt and they don't know how to pay for it, you deserve to go bankrupt because you're a moron. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Every well, when I was working with Telstra, the excuses that we got were uh, who reads the contract, um, <laughs> things like well, you know, I didn't understand the contract, and it's like well, should have signed it. it. We yeah. used to, well, there was two types when I was working. There was the one you sign, and then there was a voice signature one where we would actually read the contract yes, out. Yes, And then yes. they would go, yeah, I agree with that. It's like, well, I why understand. did you yes, say right. you understand and agree? Because they weren't like, listening. I didn't want you to think I was stupid. Well, you are stupid, obviously. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, oh, look, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's crazy. you got to sort oh, these things just, out. It just yourself. amazes like, me. It just it flummoxes me because I think, how I'm dumb just... are people? Hey. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's silly. You know, I've never if, had look, a if you're 14, had it. I can understand you get conned. Easy to get conned. You're 14, you're naive, you're not very worldly, you never worked before. But when you're 20, mm. oh, come on. But but even though, if you're 14, you still know how much you, what you're allowed to go to. Like, if That's you, right, you, they do. Like, even back then, you know, you probably you, you'd sit down and you go, all right, okay, I've done a few calls, maybe. It's like, it's like your petrol tank. You haven't got. Yeah, a, you haven't got right. a, if you haven't got a light that comes on, you go. Well, I've done four hundred k. It's going to run out pretty soon. Maybe I should just top up anyway. You know. Yeah. But, or 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 I can't top up, so I won't drive today. You mm. know, when you're at uni or something like that. A lot of guys. Well, I won't. I'll ask someone to give me a lift because I don't get paid. Yeah. Till Monday. Yes. So I won't drive my car on the weekend. That's right. You don't say drive your car and run on empty and go. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> No, it's just right. moronic. They just, you know, it's it's what you know why because it's Generation Me. It should be called Generation Me, mm. um, and everything's been done for them. They've been mollycoddled. They haven't been educated by their parents. Everything's yeah. been done for them. They're not, they, you know, it's oh, she'll be right. She'll be right. You're wonderful. You can do whatever you want if you put your mind to it. Well, you know what? That's crap. You can't do anything you want if you put your mind to it. Otherwise, we'd all be playing cricket for Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right. Oh, the cricket. Let's hope that Sri Lanka goes a bit better. Um, all right. Well, I've got a couple more. I think they look like one more from your guys' side. So let, let's go to the self-controlled swimming robot. Have you? Has everyone seen the self-controlled swimming robot? No, I have not. Well, it's a record breaker. 
It's a, it has done a record-breaking 16,668 kilometres trip. It took the Pack X Wave Glider just over a year to achieve. It went from somewhere, um, well, somewhere overseas in England or somewhere. Uh, Liquid Robotics, the US company behind the project, collected data about the Pacific Ocean's temperature, salinity, and ecosystem from the drone. And now I might have a little for those on the video. The, one of the advantages of video is you get pictures. Now, the robot is called Papa Mau, M-A-U, P-A-P-A-M-A-U, in honour of the late Micronesian navigator Pius Mau Palug, who had a reputation for finding ways to navigate the seas without using traditional equipment. Okay, so during the journey of the, the uh, self-controlled swimming robot, it's gathered, it's uh, weathered gale force storms, fended off sharks. Fended off sharks? Why would a shark even be interested in this hunk of, hunk of solar they're power not, they're stuff? They're not, they're not. Sharks aren't that bright either, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so fed off sharks, spent more than 365 days at sea, skipped around the Barrier Reef and finally uh, uh, battled and battled and surfed itself into the East Australian current to reach the final destination in Harvey Bay. There's a second one due to land in Australia early next year and another pair had been heading to Japan, but one of them suffered damage and had to uh, just uh, be taken to Hawaii for a bit of uh, TLC. Now, each robot is composed of two halves, the upper part shaped like a stunted... A stunted surfboard is attached by a cable to a lower part that sports a series of fins and a keel. They do not use fuel, but instead convert energy from the ocean's waves, turning it into forward thrust. Now, solar panels installed on the upper surface of the gliders power numerous sensors and take readings every 10 minutes. So, whoopee-doo. There you go. So, it's come a long way. Now, it's keeping in the... <laughs> keeping in the, uh, in the theme of robots. There was another robot. Because we all, you know, we all like uh, stories about, you know, greenhouse and, you know, keep the earth fresh and clean and clean energy and all this. Was the robot's name Julia? No. No, this robot a is a, not... She's a bit of a robot. I don't know if this, uh, this next robot has, has got one, but it's, it comes from Bristol Robotics Laboratory. Uh, the Eco Bottle must be, that's what it's called, the Eco Bottle. Now, guess what powers this little fella? Hang on, I'll show you a picture of it. Yeah, we show me the picture and I'll... <laughs> I'll let you know. What the hell is that? So it's hoped that the robot could... EcoBot, I would say that's powered by um, food waste. Well, very close. Very oh, really? Close. Good guess. It's powered by it... poo. Well, okay. Because <laughs> it looks a bit like the flux capacitor. Oh, yes, of course. That's the good old flux capacitor. Now, the, uh, it turns, it feeds off sewage, turning energy from the nutrient-rich waste into electricity. It hoped the robot could help improve the way the waste is treated in sewage plants. It's made up of batteries that produce electricity, uh, trays to hold the waste, and even a fly-trapping hat. Oh, you got, yeah, that's a must. You've got to have the fly-trappers. And the, oh, God, without that, it's just poo. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I can't understand. What would make a scientist just just build something, throw a, a hunk of poo? It's human poo. It's not just animal. It's, it has to be human poo. And throw a handful of human poo into a device and say, hmm, I, thought, I think there's a bit of power in that. Think, you know what? I'm going to attach a light switch to that. I want to power my house, God damn it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's the poo, it's the poo mobile. Oh, my goodness. There you it's, go. It's poo power, everyone. Human poo must have a higher octane value or something. Methane, yeah. I don't know, but have a look at it. On the, on the, if you're on the video, you'll be able oh, to look, see it. This, this thing would be an absolute billion-dollar idea. They've just got to put a couple of them down in Canberra. Yeah. Well, the amount of hot air and crap that comes out of there. <laughs> oh, look, I think that the, the, the septic from the from Parliament House would probably keep this thing running for... For a oh, like you, 20 you know, years. You, 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 you listen to all the crap coming out of Wayne Swan's mouth this this week. That power, it'd be, you know, free energy for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> the cri the crisis is over. <laughs> the crisis is over. Wayne Quick. Swan opens his, his mouth, and God damn it, where there's crap for everyone. Quick, we, we've got to put his uh, got to put his hamburger bill. Feed him more. Feed him more. We need more output. That's right, more that's output. Right. More output. <laughs> all right. Can I segue to an article that is actually about output? You may, please do. Apple, to double, last Apple story of the day. Apple to double the size of fuel cell plant at North Carolina Data Center. This is huge, this thing. A new filing with the North Carolina 
bad spilling again, Mikey Campbell. North Carolina Utilities Commission reveals that Apple plans to double the number of fuel cells deployed at its maiden data center, which will be able to output power and to power 6,250 homes. That's huge. Massive. Look at that. So there's the vacant lot there, so they're going to double it, and that's the existing one next to it. Now, I'll read on. Apple's existing array of 24 hydrogen-based energy servers outputs 4. 8 megawatts of power and, the la and is the largest private installation of its kind. And like I said earlier, it plans to add another 26 fuel cells to up it to 10 megawatts. But it goes on. There's an interesting down the bottom here. Um, oh, where is it? Here. In addition to the fuel cell farm, Apple has also built the country's largest solar array to help power its data center. The solar array sits on 100 acres, which is a lot of land. Yeah. And it, its 20 megawatt installation provides 42, kilowatt, million, 42 million kilowatt hours of clean energy per year. Wow. Right now, if, if 10 uh, megawatts is going to power 6,000 homes, what was 42 million kilowatts? Yeah, wow. Sorry, yeah, twenty. Me it's just, it's just, it's just twenty megawatt installation. So it's double. So it's fifteen thousand homes. Yeah, that's good. Uh, well, that's on a hundred acres. And it's it, the cells sit on a hundred acres. Mm, yeah, that's yeah, not. Right. It's not the land is in a hundred acres, and there's cells somewhere inside there. The cells take up a hundred acres. hundred acres of space. That's a lot of space. That's a lot of. That's space. a hell of a lot of space. Yeah, because I used to live on a farm. Where I grew up on a farm. It was 60, 62 acres. That's a lot yeah. of room. A hundred is nearly oh, look, as look, much unless again. they've written that they've written that in in, in an ambiguous fashion, and mm. it's on the hundred acre lot, but doesn't take up the hundred acre lot because that's a lot of land. Yeah, you know? it, that's a lot of land. A lot of investment in the panels as well. That's huge. That is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. good on them. Good on them for doing that. Now uh, I think that's about it. I think we're we're done. Are you done, Shane? You got anything else? That you want to, um... Yeah, um, no, if we're running out of time, I'm done, but I was just going to touch on that Telstra making play for Google Apps story that I had. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Yep. So Telstra will today launch, and I don't know when I actually found this thing, so it could have been days ago. Telstra uh, will today launch a system for Android phone users to buy apps and charge them to their phone bills. Telstra Director of Consumer Applications and Services, Freddie Jensen Van Alphabet, says the um, system is a response to the demand by customers for an easy way to purchase more than 700,000 apps from the Google Play Store. Mr. Van Alphabet says Australians download 36 apps per year, uh, on average obviously per, per person, um, of which about one of five are paid apps. The system is the uh, first time Australian, uh, the system is, is the first time Australia can pay for Android apps on phone bills. Telstra has uh, teamed up with Google to deal with the, um, the uh, teamed up with Google in the deal that allows Android phone users to put Google Play purchases up to $20 each transaction on their mobile phone bill. Uh, to mark the launch, Telstra and Google are offering a range of Android apps at half price until December 18. Those apps include HD widgets, Soundhound Infinity, Paper Camera, Smart Tools, Sketchbook, uh, Sketchbook Mobile, and Star Chart. Well, is it is it hard at the moment to buy an app? No. Is it? Is it? Oh yes, yeah, <laughs> bloody it's real. It's difficult. Is it? Yeah. It's obviously hard for a, a, someone that can't do it. But I mean, what you got to? How old you got to be before you can have a phone bill? You must have to be eighteen. You can't eighteen or, or, or parents' consent. Yep, okay, so you've got to be 18. If you're 18, you probably should be able to have a credit card. And if not a credit card, if, you, if you, you've got your, your credit history, you know, up your bum, well, you could probably have, you'd probably get a debit card at least. Yep, um, yep. Oh, easy. Anyone can get a debit card. You got, I think it's 16 for a debit card. Yeah, and, and if you've got credit up your bum, well, then should you be getting a bit more stuff piled onto your telephone bill? I don't know. I don't know. No. no. You get, and then you get bill shock again. Then we're back That's to right. the same old story we're <laughs> talking right. about this next week. <laughs> That's right. Bill shock through apps. But it was a limit of 20 bucks. Is that what, is, was that right? 20 bucks per 
transaction. It's oh, per transaction. Like oh, yeah, per transaction. Oh, God. So you could do five transactions a day worth $100. Well, what's do that twice a week and see what your bill's like. What's Telstra yeah. getting out of this? They must be getting cut somewhere. Oh, they're getting a cut. They're getting their 30% like Apple would. Of course they are. Well, then what's Google getting? Well, there's... 70%. No, well, who, what's the, the developer getting? Nothing. 70%. Yeah, that's 130%. Yeah. Yeah, no, but... no, Google would get... If, if Google didn't develop it, they wouldn't be getting nothing. They might be getting a clip off the top, maybe, you know, 1% off the top, but... No, nah, they'd be but, getting uh, something. You'd be like a 70-30, like, like Apple. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's a... Oh, look, I suppose for people that obviously don't have credit cards, but... I'll oh. tell you what, here's, here's a little tip. Not... You Gen Y people, you, you go out there and you just buy these apps because I want to read about your story this time next week. That's right. That's right. Gen, Gen Y shock. Buy um, paid apps anyway. Everyone else gets bloody, everyone gets the free apps. So I, I can't see it making a big dent, to be honest. Have you got, uh, you, know those, no. you know those doors in the, the high rises in Sydney that just spin around? To, yes. Have you got one of those on your office, Eric? You know, and with a, like Gen Y through no. this door, and then you see him coming through, and you you spin, you got the button, and you go, Bzz, it's, make it really quick. That's right. Just throws them out. Ah! They think they're walking in, but they find that they can't get in. They keep walking back out of the building. I just lock them in there. I lock them in there, and there'll be a trap door, and it just they just sink to the yeah. bottom, and it looks like they just disappeared. And then in the basement, there's all these Gen Y people on their phones <laughs> trying to call, trying to call their mother. Oh look, I'm sorry, Gen Y people. We don't mean it. We we're all we were all there at one point, but yeah. um. But as I as, as I lo- yeah as I said, as long as evolved. look, Gen Y is fine. You all you all get a bit lackadaisical and a bit complacent and a little bit, you know, whatever when you're that age. But as long as you're still not Gen Y when you're 30, that's all I ask. <laughs> but you know, we we're obviously the the uh, the Gen Ys that listen to the podcast, they're not lazy because they know. That the other while the other guys are lazy, make hay while the sun shines, and we, we, you guys That's right. stick together That's and, right. and, and you get into all the stuff. smart ones. They know what they're doing. They're looking for, they're looking around them, going, "Look at these guys, all my age, but I'm gonna, I'm That's just right. gonna just walk straight past them." They're the Stephen Bradburys. Everyone falls over in front of you. You just go over the line. Yeah, because that's like what uh, my old man says about the you know people that are on the dole, <clears throat> not the people that are generally looking for work, but the people that are on the dole because that's their lifestyle. Because they couldn't be bothered. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, you know, he goes, he just says, I don't know why people get upset about that. I said, well, Yeah, why? <laughs> he goes, Well, because yeah, hello. Yeah, he goes, Well, so these people that are on the dole, they want to be on the dole. You leave them there because then otherwise you're just going to put them in a job that someone else wants. You know, so let them let them be losers. Let them be losers. Leave them on the dock. That's true. On that, but unfortunately, on the the flip side, that is, we're paying for these idiots. Yeah. Yeah. Well, true. That's the problem. But then, if you put them into, you know, if you if you force them into a job they don't want, well, that takes that job away from someone that wants it. That's that's, what. There's plenty of jobs cleaning toilets and being on road crews and digging up roadkill off the highways. Clean and vomit trains. uh, So they can do that. (laughs) If they don't want to get off their ass and study, they can do that. And I guarantee they're not taking that job away from anyone. No, that's right. That's, that's all theirs, buddy. <laughs> all right. Well, we've come to the end of the show uh, once again. Geez, these, these hours go quick, don't they? They really, yes, really, they do. really fast. So, um, so take it easy this week, Eric. Hope you have a nice week. And... Oh, well, mate. We're flat out. We'll give you a little. I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll speak off air. All right. And, Shane, you uh, have a good week too. Whatever you Hopefully may... I'll have me um, desktop next week. Oh, yeah. Yes, good stuff. Mate, stuff. the amount of time you've spent waiting for that thing, why don't you just go and buy one? Well, I paid for it last week and I rang them yesterday and they said... Where would you order it from? What? Um, just a local P shop, PC shop that um, in the past... What, you're patient? Um, oh, I tell you what, you're patient. I would have been on the phone. I would have been screaming the house down. The amount oh, of time yeah, you... but I mean, in, in fairness, I was... You know, I was sort of negotiating, sort of saying, well, how about we take a hundred bucks here? How about we switch, switch this for this cheaper thing? And there's a lot of negotiation going on. <laughs> yeah. so, well, so, okay, so I'll come over the Perth and punch you in the face. Then. <laughs> yeah, because I've ended up buying the original quote anyway. Oh, they got you in the end. <laughs> they, yeah, give yourself an uppercut, son. <laughs> they got you in the end. They always do. They always, there's no, you can't win with these. The people. price is what it is, mate. It is what it is. That's yeah. right. So, all right. So, that's good. So, we'll see these guys next week. Uh, and thanks to Brad and Tech Webcast, techwebcast.info. If you join us on the live stream, you'll see that the He Show replayed before our show every Thursday night uh, around about 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Depends on how long He Show goes for. But uh, if you want to catch He Show, if you miss it and you want to catch it, just jump on the iTunes and give it a bit of a subscription. 
Uh, you can contact us on the Twitter at uh, Eric with a K Franco at uh, on Eric's Twitter or Shane is Shane nineteen seventy three. Will's at Mr. Tomkinson and I'm at Aussie Techheads. And you could also send an email, Glenn, Will, Shane or Eric at AussieTechheads.com.au. And so don't forget that the hosting, AussieTechheads.com.au forward slash hosting, forward slash live, forward slash radio, forward slash whatever you like. There's something there. Paper. <laughs> if you're bored, paper. If you're bored at night, put a forward slash on and have a go. You'll be right. So until next week, it's uh, goodbye from me and it's goodbye from... All these guys here too. Bye-bye. See you guys.